and we're back. Hey everybody, Dave Geisler here with the Technophiles Newscast. Intel has been getting a lot of attention lately with their RealSense cameras. So back in 2014, some SDK kits for the Intel RealSense started showing up, but it really went mainstream at the 2015 CES about a month ago. That's when Intel CEO Brian Krasanich did a live demo of the technology in their keynote. He showed us that the technology is a series of cameras that can actually read three-dimensional space. It's interesting to note, however, that actually this is not a product per se, it's more of a technology that Intel would like to have put into, frankly, everything. By that I mean that the cameras themselves are fairly simple, but the technology in the software behind the cameras is really what Intel's excited about. So of course the combination between the hardware and the software will allow the technology to read three-dimensional space. And I know what you're saying, you're saying, well David, the Kinect does that, Leap Motion does that, there's a lot of things that kind of already do that. The thing is, this is like a whole nother level. The way RealSense works is there's basically two optic cameras that can uh, be used to render three-dimensional space and there's one infrared camera. So we have an optic layer, an infrared layer, and what they're calling a depth layer. Essentially what the depth layer does is take the world and create all these little slices of three-dimensional space. And this is important to point out. What RealSense is doing is it's combining these layers so now it can do uh, facial recognition, but not just looking for eyebrows and noses, it can see someone's face, and it kind of knows it's looking at a face. Some developers who've been playing around with the technology for the past couple months have said that it's incredibly accurate. Um, it does not record as far back as a Kinect does. Essentially, a Kinect can scan an entire room. This kind of only goes a couple feet, but on the flip side, it's incredibly accurate, just inches away from the sensor. Whereas we know the Kinect, you need you know, you get four feet close to that thing and it says, back up, back up, I need space, dude. So what does this mean? Since the hardware is relatively simple, it can go into everything, phones, tablets, um, front-facing computer displays. It can go into drones. So why would one of these have to go into a tablet or a phone? Well, quite frankly, the technology is so impressive that you could now use a phone as a 3D scanner. It is accurate enough to make a three-dimensional model of an object that you could uh, 3D print or put into a computer model. You could potentially use a tablet and record your entire room and have a 3D model of it. Of course, with laptops, now we're talking kind of Minority Report style controls, but you don't have to wear the Tom Cruise gloves. At least you don't have to be Tom Cruise. He runs so fast which is always a plus. And as far as drones go, well, frankly, there's already a prototype out there of six sets of these cameras that look kind of in 360 degrees on a drone so that it can see three-dimensional space around it. There's a lot of forward momentum with drones and um, using GPS to recognize where they're at, no-fly zones that are put around airports and things like that. It's wonderful that drones are moving in that direction, but frankly, still, they don't know, they might know where they are on the globe, but they don't know that there's a tree to their right and a street pole to their left yet. Not to put too fine a point on it, but something like RealSense would allow that. So cool stuff. I mean, there was a lot of companies at CES that expressed that they were really excited to work with this technology. I, for one, am very excited. Now I can finally get that drone that really sees me for what I am. So how do you guys feel about RealSense technology? Do you think you'd be most excited to use it uh, as a 3D scanner on your phone, a minority report style interface on your computer, or a way for your drone to be able to see the world? Let us know in the comments below, or you can send us a tweet at Technophiles Pod. Of course, you can also find us on our Facebook page by searching Technophiles or go to our actual website, technophilespodcast.com. I hope you enjoyed that episode. It was our first episode back into season two. We are going to be doing things a little differently this year. We're going to be posting videos every couple days now, which I'm super duper excited about. So uh, if you like, click around. We've got the links around me. And uh, we'll see you, actually we'll see you tomorrow.